back under the green flag. Michael Self, the race leader. Gray Galding is there. Here comes Derek Thorne to the inside. We'll have one lap to run as they go to turn number one. Self the point, but here comes Gray Galding. Gets into him in turn number one. Derek Thorne gets turned. Golden remains in the second spot. Final time up the back stretch. Golden works it down the back straightaway into turn number three. Uh, as he works down into turn number three and four. Carnage in turn one and two. Golden slides up the racetrack. Cameron Haley gets a run. Cameron Haley beating and banging side by side. Trading paint. Cameron Haley by half a car length will win the UNOH battle at the beach for the NASCAR k and Pro Series. What a finish. Cameron Haley comes from nowhere trading paint all the way through turns three and four after Gray Galding, Steve Post looked like he overdrove turn number three. Gray Galding had this baby under tow down into turn number three and the car just chased up the racetrack in turn number four. Haley, he had to think the seas parted. He cut the car to the left, got a runoff from turn number four. They were side by side and you guys a brilliant call down to the line as they beat on each other but it looked like Cameron Haley going to score the win. Right place, right time for Cameron Haley as the others went spinning around him. And then the cut tire for Gray Galding sent that car up the racetrack off of turn four on the final lap. That opened the door for Cameron Haley. Snook to the inside and raced side by side with Gray Galding to the checkered flag to win by less than a car length. He'll win the NASCAR K&N Pro Series feature event. For the UNOH battle at the beach here at Daytona International Speedway, Gray Galding will have to settle for second, Brian Ortiz third, Ryan Gifford fourth, and Ben Kennedy will round out the unofficial top five. All the way from Calgary, Alberta, Canada to Daytona Beach, Florida, Cameron Haley will go to victory lane and we'll chat with him in a moment. Cameron Haley picks up the win in the NASCAR k and Pro Series here at the Battle at the Beach. Gray Galding was second. Brian Ortiz was able to rally it back across the line and finish third. And Kyle, just like last night, like the modified race earlier, it's about survival. I'm telling you, you didn't want to be the race leader going into that final lap here tonight. And uh, that proved to be the case here in the k and Pro Series race as well. And another wild finish, Cameron Haley able to avoid not one incident in turn number one, but also able to avoid a slowing Gray Galding off of turn number four to pick up the win here this evening. Cameron driving for uh, Gene Price Racing, jumping in that car that uh, was vacated last year by series champion Dylan Kwasniewski. Team picks right back up where they left off here in 2013. Let's go downstairs, hear from some of our top finishers. First, we'll start with Buddy Long. All right, Brian Ortiz, and he looks like he has got the workout of a lifetime here this evening. That is probably the hardest earned third place effort for you, I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. At the beginning, we just wanted to have a good pace and everything, and got spun, and uh, was a lap down a couple of places, so we need to wait a couple of yellow flags to get the, the lucky, though, and we just keep working, and I can't. I still can't believe it, but the team have done an amazing job. Brave racing, my new crew, Chivetti. They've been working so hard, and I'm really grateful for them. Well, when you look around this car, there's a little bit of damage right to the left front. Of course, when you look at just about every car out there, they had some type of damage. But you guys did probably something that the other two series wasn't able to do, and that was get some good consecutive green flag laps going there for quite a while. Yeah, for sure. I think it was a really, really good race. Um, I know there was a. A little bit contact with other competitors that uh, some crashes and all that but compared to the lamos and the modifier we we had a very good race i think i don't know how it was on tv but uh i think i, I enjoy it a lot what's your plans for the balance of the season after daytona um i'm gonna be the full season with the diversity program and rev racing so hopefully going for the championship i think this is a, a great start for the season and uh we'll be in bristol all right, it wasn't a points race, but it's a great shot in the arm for the beginning of the season for young Brian Ortiz. certainly was an, a race of survival to be able to stay out there and avoid spinning race cars right, left, and even in front of you or even behind you that can take you out as well. Good, hard, short track racing, I think, is exactly what we expected out here. Looks like Gray Galding's just climbed out of his green and white Krispy Kreme Toyota, and Buddy Long is standing alongside. All right, young Gray Galding, I, you, one of your crew members, I mean, this, oh, I'm, excuse me, I've knocked it with the clipboard here. I'm going to knock the poor boy out. Uh, 
the second that your crew members got to you, boy, they picked you up and they wanted to hoist you over the fence just so everybody else could see you. What does this mean for you? I mean, I know you were so close to it, but what a great performance tonight. Yeah, it was a, it was a great finish. I uh, just can't thank my team guys enough that uh, worked so hard on this thing. Uh, I really hate seeing that one get away from us, but it's Daytona. Anything can happen. Just uh, felt like I slipped in something there and or I just maybe got in a little too hot on the brakes. But it happens, and I uh, tried getting them at the line, but everybody's worked so hard. Krispy Kreme Donuts, Toyota. Um, this is a dream come true. This is a highlight of my career. Uh, just to say, you know, 20, 30 years from now that I had a battle, and uh, we battled to the, the very last second of, of, of the finish line. So just an amazing race. Can't thank NASCAR enough uh, for be, be, letting me be able to be able to be part of this uh, amazing, amazing historic track yeah, at the age of 15. So we'll uh, go to our next race and see what happens. All right, Cut. I mean, earlier today we talked to Doug George, your crew chief, or we were trying to get to somebody talking about brakes, and they said at one point there was an issue with your rear brakes, and that was a problem that you need to concentrate more on the front brakes. Can you explain that a little bit more for us? Yeah, well, uh, I just tried to do the best I could with the brakes, uh, especially because this place is so small, and uh, it's just like Martinsville. So for the last 20 laps, i got to say I gave it all I had, and uh, – I don't think there's anything left in the tank, so uh, that's all That's all I can say. So we'll go on to the next race and see what we can do, but I'm really excited about this season. We're going we're gonna to give them heck for sure. So we're going to try to go for Rookie of the Year and the championship, so really looking forward to it. He's only 15 years old, and he is just beginning his surge and his trek to the championship of the Can-In Pro Series season. Let's go to Woody Kane at Victory Lane. We're with Cameron Haley, and this is his first win in the Can-In Cars. He finished seventh last year in the series. Man, third time. The last lap proved to be the high drama lap. Tell us about it. Well, I'm not even sure what happened. I, all I know is I started on the outside, and uh, one thing led to another, and suddenly I'm second place trailing the leader. And I come around that final corner, he pushed up a little bit, and I took advantage of it. It's just the most incredible thing ever. Tell me about the racing conditions out there tonight. The other guys seem to have a lot more cautions, but the more it went on, the more you guys started to take the gloves off as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was crazy out there. We had guys wrecking left, right, and center. But you know what? We we dropped back, I, I think, to eight there on the last caution. And we we weren't quite sure. We had uh, got held up on a spin, and we went back to all the way to 15th. And we weren't sure, but my crew chief, Jeff Jefferson, just gets, kept saying, push, push, push. And I did, and it, it paid off. It was incredible. Tell us about this car. I understand it has a little history behind it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Dylan Kwasniewski won the championship in it last year, and, uh, I mean, obviously it's a great piece. He did great work in it last year, and uh, I'm just glad to keep the legacy going this year. And what's ahead for you for the rest of 13? Well, we're going to be running a full season with Gene Price Motorsports. Uh, I know the truck series lowered the age limit to 16, so I want to see if I can do that, but right now our options are open. It's, it's going to be a great year with Gene Price Motorsports. All right, Cameron Haley, guys, goes to victory lane first time in the K&N cars. All the way from Canada to Daytona, he's in victory lane. And he'll be back on track next in just about a week and a half from now at the Phoenix International Raceway when the NASCAR k and Pro Series West Division opens up their 2013 campaign. Let's give you a full field rundown of the way they finished here tonight's the 150-lap main event for the NASCAR k and Pro Series. Cameron Haley picking up the win over Gray Galding. Brian Ortiz was third. Ryan Gifford fourth. Ben Kennedy rounded out the top five. Derek Thorne was sixth, followed by DJ Kennedy. Michael Self, Greg Persley, and Kyle Larson. Kale Conley came home 11th. The 12th place finisher was Noel Dowler. Jorge Getters was 13th, with Tyler Reddick coming home 14th. Running in 15th tonight, Dalton Zier. Martin Roy comes home in the 16th position. Austin Self was 17th. Chuck Buchanan Jr. was 18th, while the 19th place finisher was Daryl Haar. Dylan Presnell rounded out the top 20. And he did not finish the event, uh, along with Sergio Pena in 21st, Corey LaJoy 22nd, Andar Villarino was 23rd, followed by David Mayhew and C.J. Fajan, the top 25, Carl Haar, Dylan Kwasniewski, and John Hunter Nemechek round out tonight's finishing order in a race that saw 10 caution flags fly in this 150-lap event, Cameron Haley, all he needed to do was lead one lap to get the win here tonight in the UNOH Battle at the Beach. That's all it takes. In order to finish first, you must first finish. That was the case in all three races here in the University of Northwest Ohio Battle at the Beach at Daytona. And, Kyle, overall, I think it was highly successful for the inaugural event here at the Battle of the Beach. 
able to hear from the last car late model competitors last night, the NASCAR k and Pro Not Series even. and Modifieds here tonight. Three wild races here on the back straightaway of the Daytona International Speedway, and uh, three different winners get it etching their name into the record books here in Daytona. Our coverage of Budweiser Speed Weeks co co continues tomorrow at 2.30 with final practice for the NASCAR duels on Thursday afternoon. All the races can be heard here on Motor Racing Network throughout the rest of the week. For Alex Hayden up here in the tower, Woody Kane and Buddy Long in the pits, and Steve Post in the turn, I'm Kyle Rickey congratulating Cameron Haley, your race winner in tonight's NASCAR K&N Pro Series feature event.